Hey, what's going on? Hanging out with my friend Tom Crutchfield. Always good to get down here and visit with you. We uh, always catch up. We talk about reptiles. I learn a few things and I wanted to bring you along as well. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennett. This week's special shout out goes to Jess Harker. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Thanks for lunch, as always. My pleasure. Uh, but what's really exciting is the last time we were here, we saw the Mangshare Vipers and they were in vision cages, which is in a uh, horrible existence. But as you've kind of grown in this uh, hobby, uh, herpetology, whatever you want to call it, you've kind of changed a lot of your thinking. I have. Uh, I, we... we... We really don't give, on, uh, nothing that we keep pretty much on average, we don't give it enough room, I don't think, that right. it really needs. In some cases, even to be humane, like with the big pythons. Yep. And like with the main shed vipers, because they come from an area that gets a lot colder than here, I had to design an enclosure that I could sort of be, let them get down much colder than they're used to and give them sort of like something, hopefully just make them want to breathe. Nothing yeah, else make yeah. Them happy. So I designed this cage. This cage is 18 feet long. This is awesome, guys. Look it's, uh, it's divided in the middle, as you can see. You okay. Have two snakes. Uh, They're currently I'll open hiding the door yeah. here. I'll open this door. Let's so see, see, so we can kind of see the snakes in there. And uh, also, I want you to notice that the the floor of the cage is about three feet off the ground. And that means that a snake can sit up about eight feet off the ground, like you see the big mangshan viper up there. Don't get any closer than that. Okay, you got it, buddy. I, um, Long strike range, and you okay. got one right there, too. Gotcha. Here we go. So we won't get any closer. And that's the it. middle where we have it divided, and you can see there's two snakes in there now, and we can lock that down so it becomes two cages. Very cool. Or like now, it's open. So is it a hinge it's on or is it a guillotine? It's a, it's a hinge. Oh, very cool. Yeah, you just slide it down and lock it. And lock it. Correct. But now, about this species, you know, it's natural history that's found um, in cooler parts, yeah, mountainous it, regions, it, right? It, 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 this species, Protobothrops mangshanensis, is relatively new to science. They were discovered right about 20, not even quite 20 years ago now, in a remote part of Hunan, China, in the Mangshan Mountains. And uh, where that comes from, it gets very cold and even snows and you get ice and all that sort of thing. So uh, I wanted to design this cage for, you know, inside of a building where we could get them cold. So in October, I turned the air conditioning down in the room, which we have yep, right there, right the there. air conditioning down to 60. And it literally never got above 60 degrees in here, except for the windows that you see here on either side. And they have heavy duty welded wire on the outside and the windows are open so they can get unfiltered sunlight for about three or four hours a day and if we get a really hard rain it'll rain inside of the cage even so they get rained on even. very you can cool see we have living plants in the cage in pots uh and it seems to be working out and they have really changed behavior so we're hoping this next year for eggs hopefully well that would be fantastic i mean yeah. you could see this one here you mentioned earlier was in shed yes. so it's just kind of lying down but each with the exception of these two they're kind of together the other snakes seem to find a place they prefer and they hang out one thing you mentioned earlier which is neat is this plywood basking area that mm -hmm. this one serpent's on right now okay. uh you modified it very very simply uh, most people would just like, oh, it's a basking platform and leave it flat. No, you've uh, you've modified it, and it's got itself a little uh, branch there screwed to it. I did. And and what is that for? Okay, the branch is because when they want to rest anywhere, out you know wherever they are, they want something to hang on to you. They want what I call tactile support. And by taking just that little branch and screwing it tight so it stays on top. You can see how the snake is wrapped around it and yeah. clinging to it, it feels secure. That's really cool. And it's like when you have a hide, a, a retreat box too. A lot of my retreat boxes outside have retreats inside of them and then I have another box inside of the box. Very cool. So the animal can touch it. Yeah, there's a term, and I forgot it, but one of you guys in the comments, um, I know you'll, you'll 
put it there, when an animal likes to feel something against it, there's an actual term. Tactile support. Yeah, tactile support. Mm -hmm. All right, I think there was uh, yet another term that we'll find out. Let me know in the comments below. You guys can do some work for me as well and help me remember things that I forget. Now, another cool thing about this room is you had mentioned, you know, like this is kind of neat because a lot of people think Florida, oh, everything's outdoors. Well, in this case, this animal needs a little bit of a cooler uh, ambient temperature, mm -hmm. but we were walking around this room before and I thought you guys might like to see this. Um, now, it's 60 degrees for all the animals in here, but you have a simple solution mm -hmm. and there's a reason for this. I want you to explain about, you know, why well, is it okay to be 60 degrees out here, but what's going on with the Gila monsters? Well, the Gila monsters are gonna come out periodically in bass, just like they do in nature when they brumate. Nothing, no reptile, when they, we use the term brumate, but really it's hibernation is what it is. In okay. Reality, they hibernate. Right. That's what they do. But they're not like a bear or something where they don't come out at all. They actually do come out on warm days in bass. Uh, you'll find rattle eastern diamondbacks and gopher tortoise burrows on sunny days in January basking by the hole. I found timber rattlesnakes in Pennsylvania yeah, in January yes. and they're out on a black rock yeah. absorbing the heat. Exactly. So that's what we provide here. And even though we do keep it cool, we let them uh, just thermoregulate the way they want to. And we're starting just to bring them out of brumation now. Now okay. we've got the temperature up in here to, I think it's uh, 75 now. Okay, but it, uh, it's noticeably but cooler. Yes, it, we, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, well, yes. And so you see them starting to become active. Here's a Gila out right here. And I'm going to, after breeding season this year, I'm going to do new cages here for all of the Gila Derma too. Okay. Like this, custom cages. And we're Larger going to give them a lot bigger for sale. Yeah. So that's really cool. I mean, Tom's always evolving. You're talking about a guy with, uh, Tom, how many years in reptiles? Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, over 50. Over 50 years, yeah. but he's still learning. And that's the fun thing oh, about yes. reptiles is that it's not a science that is, uh, you're always gonna know everything. I think that's what keeps us interested. But it's really neat when you adapt uh, uh, yourself and your thinking. That's the key, guys. You always have to be, and I learned this from Tom many, many years ago, the easiest way to learn about reptiles is to shut up and watch them. They tell you everything you need to know. You pay attention to what they're doing. And you may not understand what they're doing then, but later on you will, and you can put two and two together sometimes too. Yeah. So, yeah, they're my biggest teacher of the reptiles. They taught me a lot about them over the years. Love it. Very cool. Listen, I just want to do a quick video with Tom. Uh, today was more of a time for me to just hang out with Tom, yeah, just get to see down. each other, yeah. But it's always a pleasure, my friend. And uh, if you guys like what you're seeing, like and subscribe. Turn on your notifications and uh, leave a comment. Learn a lot from Tom. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to see what else he builds for these uh, beautiful animals. Y'all take care. Bye, Bye now. <laughs>